item 6 on the agenda, leaders, executive members and chairs reports. Item 6, pages 15 to 72 of the agenda, contains the reports <coughs> of the leader, the Royal Plan Annual Report 16 and 17, and the overview and scrutiny of committee chairs, the statutory scrutiny officers, overview and scrutiny of annual report for 16 and 17. The Council is invited to receive and note these reports. These reports will be taken as read. All questions must be confined to the contents of the report and to a relevant cabinet portfolio member. Quest questioners, please ensure that your question is no longer than two minutes. Responses to the questions will be reserved to the conclusion of all the questions on all the reports and will be an allotted maximum of 30 minutes for questions and answers to the leader or the overview and scrutiny committee chairs, which can be asked in any order. Okay, so any questions on those? Services, which we've had debates 
uh, previously in this chamber around. Um, we need to, I think, do more to um, tackle child poverty, unfortunately, because of the national economic challenges and pressures that many families are under. Uh, that's impacting on many of the, the deprived areas in Europe. And also, I, I'd like to see an increase in our know, economy. So, so there's three areas there to improve on. In closing, I, I'd just like to pay tribute really to our staff, because at the end of the day, it's the, the staff and the officers that we employ that deliver these services. And I don't think I say thank you often enough, so I'd like to say, for on record, my thanks to the officers who've helped deliver these, um, these pledges. And also our partners, because this is not a real plan uh, just for the council, it's for all our partners. And um, in closing, I am um, made good progress in the first two years, but clearly this is a plan until 2020. It was great that it was unanimously supported by all parts of the Chamber, and I hope that we can um, remain united on being clear about what our ultimate priorities and goals are for the remaining uh, three years of the, the, the plan's uh, life. So really that's all I, I want to say, just in the report. Thank you, Madam. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Well, I am before I ask you again to um, ask you any questions, that there is an amendment to this report. But how I intend to deal with this is to take the questions and the answers from the Cabinet Portfolio members and then we'll deal with the amendment immediately after that. Okay? Right, so questions to Cabinet Portfolio members. Questions. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, can I begin? Uh, my question to the Cabinet Member for Housing and Community Safety. Uh, can I begin by thanking the Cabinet Member for his work and those uh, on the coordinating group set up in, result, uh, in response sorry, to the Government Tower fire uh, and for the regular reports that he has provided to all members, uh, which have been helpful, uh, certainly to colleagues in my group. Uh, turning now to the, uh, the, uh, the World uh, Plan. There was reference to the need to tackle homelessness in that plan. Uh, the Cabinet member will be aware that in October 2016, the Government established a £40 million fund for local authorities to pilot initiatives to tackle homelessness in their area and to target support for those at imminent risk of becoming homeless or sleeping rough. While other authorities in the North West were successful in their bids, I understand that Rural Council was not. Can the Cabinet Member advise what work has been done since then to understand why our uh, bid was not successful with a need to improve our ability to bid for such funds in the future? Thank you,
do I know, and I'm going to ask you if any regrets, his decision not to proceed with Neptune, as it's apparent that there are no other offers on the horizon. And finally, Madam Mayor, my third question to the government of transport. Um, I've read through the uh, transport pages and there's very little mention uh, about public transport, which is a key um, concern of many um, residents. In fairness to the government member, I found the um, <coughs> pledges made by the pledge sponsor in uh, documentation online, uh, where they say they've established a city region bus alliance which will provide residents with information with improved, more efficient, joined up and better value bus services. Can I ask the Cabinet Member for Transport if you care to repeat this nonsense to residents of the home to state of Oxford? who are due to lose their bus service at the St. Hans Hospital following major travel review and are being told that the bus that goes to Brighton is their alternative to service. And that's what the current member of transport is doing to persuade major travel um, that, uh, that they're proposed uh, cuts to, uh, to community bus services uh, are damaging for communities affected. <coughs>
Well, I'm glad to have my thanks to the Member of Council for the prompt response, and that of the Director, <coughs> who I also contacted. Sadly, I'm still waiting for the response from the Cabinet Member. So tonight, could she tell Council what action she has taken <coughs> to ensure that all the clients of Tolmash Road are kept safe and secure? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this question is to the Cabinet Member for Growth, from the Industrial Davis. Uh, the contract for the Council's Investment Development Manager came to an end on the 30th of June. Can the leader of the Council confirm that this contract has been extended? This question is for the Cabinet Member for Highways and Transport, Stuart Whittingham. Since the call at meeting to examine the administration's plans to charge on country parks, where business owners explain in detail the devastating impact these charges will have on their businesses. What efforts, what efforts has the Cabinet then made to meet and engage with these business owners? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my question is to the Cabinet Member for Children and Families, Councillor Bernard. What steps are being taken to enable parents and carers of children with special education needs and disabilities? to give their views on the services, following the problems at the World Family Forum. And can the Cabinet Member please say why the Council is still referring parents to this organisation? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my question is to the Cabinet Member for delivering differently, Councillor Spriggs. Uh, 